Live from the campus of Washington and Lee University, this is a Channel 18 Rockbridge News Update. Welcome to the Rockbridge Report Live Tuesday Update. I'm Paige Williams. President Donald Trump is calling George Papadopoulos a liar. The former Trump campaign aide pleaded guilty to lying and omitting material facts after being arrested by the FBI in July over his connections with Russian nationals. Details about his plea agreement were made public Monday. But in a tweet this morning, Trump said, The fake news is working overtime. As Paul Manafort's lawyer said, there was no collusion and events mentioned took place long before he campaign came to the campaign. Few people knew the young, low-level volunteer named George, who has already proven to be a liar. Check the Dems. Also Monday, Trump's former campaign chair, Paul Manafort, and his deputy, Rick Gates, surrendered to Justice Department officials. They pleaded gu not guilty to several charges, including conspiracy against the U.S. Both posted bond and are on house arrest. Earlier this afternoon, Trump had no response to questions about Papadopoulos and Paul Manafort. Are you going to pardon Mr. Manafort? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. What's your reaction to the guilty plea, Mr. President? Your reaction to the guilty plea, Mr. President? To the door? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. A federal judge in Washington blocked parts of the Trump administration's transgender military ban this week. The ruling states that plaintiffs have established that the ban injures transgender people and imposes inequality on them. The president announced his intentions on Twitter. The bloc forbids the military from enforcing President Trump's directive to prohibit transgender people from enlisting or re-enlisting. The court upheld the portion of the directive that blocks military personnel from having sex reassignment surgery. The government lawyers tried to dismiss the case, arguing it was premature because the policy had not been finalized. The judge disagreed and said the plaintiffs are likely to be successful in arguing the ban violates their Fifth Amendment right to due process. The army sergeant who deserted his base in 2009 and was captured by Afghan insurgents took the stand Monday during a military hearing. Bo Bergdahl described his five years in Taliban captivity. The Washington Post reported he testified that he was beaten with hoses and kept in a cage much of the time. He also said he faced abuse from angry guards who threatened to cut off his nose and ears if he did not stop getting sick. Bergdahl reportedly apologized for the horrible mistake he made abandoning his post and endangering other troops tasked with finding him. The 31-year-old is facing sentencing after pleading guilty to charges of desertion and endangering his fellow troops. Also on Monday, the judge rejected the claim that Bergdahl cannot get a fair hearing because of President Trump's past critical remarks about Bergdahl. The judge says he alone will decide Bergdahl's sentence. It is unclear when that might be. Kevin Spacey is under fire for tweeting a so-called apology for an alleged sexual assault and coming out as gay at the same time. Actor Anthony Rapp told BuzzFeed that the House of Cards star made a sexual advance toward him in 1986. Spacey was 26 years old at the time and Rapp was just 14. Spacey said on Twitter that he may have been drunk and doesn't remember the incident, but said if it's true, he owes Rapp the sincerest apology. He then went on to say that he chooses to live as a gay man. Many celebrities responded by accusing the Oscar-winning actor of deflecting the assault allegations by coming out of the closet. Comedian Wanda Sykes tweeted, you do not get to choose to hide under the rainbow. Columnist Dan Savage said that being drunk or clo closeted does not excuse assaulting a 14-year-old child. Netflix has announced the upcoming sixth season of Spacey's show, House of Cards, will be the series' last. Lexington's Episcopal Church, formerly referred to as Robert E. Lee Memorial Church, took down the sign with its old namesake last Tuesday, Thursday. Earlier this year, the congregation voted to rename the church in light of the national con conversation spurred by the events in Charlottesville. A sign with the church's new name, Grace Episcopal Church, should be installed next week. Also in downtown Lexington, shops are preparing for the city's annual Halloween parade. The Rockbridge reports Catherine Young is there now. Catherine? 
Christmas ghosts and cowboys are among the first to arrive at Main Street Lexington's annual trick-or-treating event. Roads will be closed from 3.30 to 5 so eager trick-or-treaters can hit the stores of Lexington and pick up some candy. Although it doesn't look like there are many people here right now, kids will arrive from school starting around 3.30. Enjoy your sweets and happy Halloween. For the Rock Ridge Report, I'm Katherine Young reporting live from Main Street in Lexington. Thanks, Katherine. The parade starts at 3.30. That's all for our update today. Thank you for watching. Catch more of our coverage at therockbridgereport.wlu.edu. See you Thursday at 4.30.